What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Traders. So you guys requested this video and I wanted to do it for you. Take this video back to its roots when we're talking about specific trades, etc. I love giving you guys videos on macroeconomic conditions, what the Fed is doing, what I think the market is going to do. But these videos also show you how to potentially set up lucrative trades and look at what trades I'm looking at. So the video that I'm talking about is regarding the Tesla post split trades. I went over five trades in that video. We're going to review them, see how each one of them did and tell you why I did them and how to bank on plays like this going forward. Now it's funny because a small number of comments on that video, anytime you do a video on shorts, you're going to get you know comments from people saying how shorting is evil or whatever. Guys, you know what's evil? What's evil is the market being manipulated. What's evil is hedge funds deciding whether you make money or not. If you buy a stock and you just sit on your hands and pray that it goes up even though the market is down or even though in some cases that stock or the market is being manipulated, well, that's what's evil. Teaching yourself the tools that allow you to trade in any market is not evil. I own Tesla. I like the company, I believe in its growth story. I like where it's headed in terms of international exposure, in terms of its cash flow. I own a lot of shares. I've been buying Tesla for a lot of years. You can go back to some of the videos on this channel. Shorting a stock doesn't mean you're evil. It just means that you don't want to sit on your hands and watch your portfolio bleed. And you are literally, think of it like as if you are buying insurance on the position that you hold. You know that for one reason or another, there's going to be a downturn, whether it's because of a binary event like a stock split or because the market is at a peak or because the, the whole macroeconomic picture is negative at the moment. For whatever reason, you can buy insurance on your position and if there is a drawdown, you can make a little bit of money back instead of just sitting there and watching your portfolio bleed buying puts or shorting a stock is not evil especially if you own that stock and you believe in that company anyway it was only a small number of comments obviously most of the comments were positive because we are showcasing how to trade in any market also i sent out all of these trades all of the trades that i gave you in the video i sent those specific trades out as well in the academy so we're going to go over each one of these trades and if you want access to the trades in real time you want to be able to chat with thousands of traders about strategies all day every day you want my analysis Analysis. You want trades just like this on other stocks. I will show you some of the short positions that I currently hold. You want access to the courses, the Zoom calls with me, etc. Sign up. Link is in the description. We just did a course mastermind last week going over day trading and option strategies. It was a wonderful turnout. I love answering all of your questions. If you're watching this in August, signups are currently closed. However, there are slots that are going to open up for September. So book a call with one of our ambassadors and I look forward to seeing you. Let's go over these trades. So why did we think Tesla would drop on the stock split? Well, because just based off of recent trend, if you look at all mega cap stocks that have had recent stock splits, we're talking about Apple in 2020, Tesla in 2020, we're talking about Google and Amazon earlier this year, Shopify as well. All of these stocks tanked after the stock split. Well, why is that? If you follow the smart money in this market, you are more likely to have a better outcome than if you try to do things your own way and, and join the herd, right? Be part of what we call the dumb money. This is not a derogatory term, it just it's a stock market term, meaning following the herd instead of following what the smart money is doing. If you are new to the market, anytime you are thinking of doing something, just think what would a smart money or an institution do and it is probably usually the opposite of what you're thinking of doing. So if we look at Tesla before the split, it already announced the split, which is part of the reason that it ran up all the way up until the split date of August 25th. So they announced the split in June and you see this rally here, mostly fueled by institutional investors who are buying up this lull in price action, this consolidation sideways trading. They're buying this up because they know that most of the FOMO buyers and the newbies and beginners are going to wait until the split because the price is cheaper, right? The face value of each share is cheaper after the split because they were doing a three for one split. So if Tesla was worth 900 free split, post split, it's gonna be worth 300 and that's when the FOMO buyers are going to come in. However, the smart money knows that a split is, is just a parlor trick, right? It's, it's like exchanging $100 bills for 520s. It's the same value. We went over that in the video. Go back and watch it if you want a brief overview of what the split is and the details of the Tesla split. So 
The smart money knows that it's a parlor trick, and so they're willing to buy Tesla in the 700s and 800s, running the price up all the way until it is 900 pre-split. And they know that on the day of the split, the, the followers, the newbies, the herd, is going to come in and try to mass buy this because the price instantly seemingly changed overnight from $900 to $300. Well, the smart money is happy to give up their shares at this massive profit here because they're the ones who bought when Tesla was cheaper and when it was in this low, knowing that most of the new money is going to be, or most of the, the beginners and newbies are going to be focused on it after the split since the face value is cheaper. As I said before, this happened with Google, Amazon, Apple, Tesla from the 2020 split, which dropped, I think, 35% after the split, Shopify, etc. Does it mean we're profits? No. Does it mean that we're Nostradamus? No. It just means that we're following the trend and trying to make an optimal trade versus a non-optimal trade. So trade number one was buying outright puts. And you can see here that we bought the 270 put, which was worth $2.95 at the time, expiring September 9th. That put is now worth over $6, marking over 100% trade on those puts. Buying a put is the simplest form of shorting in my opinion because all you have to do is buy a put contract and wait. However, because puts lose value over time, just like all options do, calls do as well, you are at the mercy of, or you are at a race against time. You need the stock to tank well in advance of the expiration date, which it did. You could see here Tesla is down 12% since the highs that it achieved earlier this month. Now, Tesla is at a major technical level here. This is called an SR flip or a support resistance flip. If you see here, Tesla is now finding support at what used to be resistance back in July. So being over 100%, this is a good time to let go of your puts. And if you have multiple contracts, leave runners, what we call runners, meaning just a couple of, of contracts open if you had multiple contracts, just in case we break this structure to the downside and head back to the low 200s, which is the post split price. Trade number two that we talked about in that video was selling the call spread. Now, when you sell a call spread, you are selling one call, the lower uh, strike price, and you are buying the higher strike price. This is less risky than buying a put, but also it caps your profit at a maximum level. There is a maximum profit level that you can never make more than, but there's also a maximum loss level that you can never lose more than. So it is a risk defined trade. As you can see here, we sold the 290 call, bought the 295 call expiring September 16th, and we did this for $2.40. Now the max value of this call spread is $5 because we sold the 290 and we bought the 295. So the max you can ever lose on this trade is not $5, that is the max value of the actual contract, the entire uh, call spread itself. But because we sold this for $240, our max loss is actually $5 minus $2.40. So our max loss is $2.60 or $260 per contract because each contract represents 100 shares. This is a risk-defined trade. We can only ever make this much if Tesla is below 290 by expiration, and we can only ever lose this much if Tesla is above 295 by expiration. Luckily, Tesla tanked as we suspected. It is currently trading at 277, and this position is up over 30%. We can close it out anytime we want. We can hold until expiration, and if it's below 290, then we get to keep $240 per contract. Also, unlike puts, credit call spreads have a positive theta, meaning they gain value every day. They don't lose value every day like puts do. The next position was selling a covered call. That was the third trade I went over in that video. And we ended up selling the 400 covered call on Tesla for $8.50 or $850. Now, you're going to need 100 shares of stock if you want to do this. And I do have 100 shares of Tesla. Now, you could have bought 100 shares of Tesla at the at on the split date because it is cheaper and you could have sold the 400 cover call or if you had 100 shares before for each 100 shares you could sell a covered call in this case we sold the 400 cover call on Tesla which I was more than happy to do when you sell a covered call essentially the consequences of that is if Tesla is 400 or above by the expiration date then you have to sell 100 shares of Tesla stock for every covered call that you sold. 
but you are selling it for $400 plus you get to keep the 850 bucks that you sold the call for. So your sell basis on Tesla will be $408.50. Now the reason that I was happy to do this, this is essentially for me free money, is because $408.50, this represents a pre-split price of $1,225.50. This is near Tesla's all-time high. So the worst case scenario, if I'm planning on just holding my Tesla shares, the worst case scenario for me is that I would have to let go of Tesla at the all-time high price. So this to me was free money and also covered calls. Yes, you can close them out at any time. You can buy them back for cheaper. Over time, if Tesla continues to trade under $400, these contracts will make you money every single day. So right now, that 400 cover call on Tesla is up 37%. I can close it out for 37% profit, or I could just hold it, and if Tesla's below 400 by December 16th, I get to keep $850 for each contract. So that outlines the three trades that we took on Tesla. There were two more in that video, but those two trades were what I was planning to do to pick up more Tesla after the drop. Now, as I said, Tesla is down 12% here from highs after the split. So we can actually start the dollar cost average here if you are an avid, avid dollar cost averager because you know, Tesla's down 12% from highs, but it is from recent highs, but it is down 33% from all time highs that we saw back in November. So 33% down on a blue chip stock if you believe in the growth story and you believe that Tesla is going to keep rising in value over the years, then 33% down is a significant discount. However, Tesla at one point very recently was down almost 50%. So you can either start to dollar cost average from here, which was actually just the, the fifth. Uh, trade in that video, you can start the dollar cost average on the way down. You can also wait to see if Tesla breaks this market structure here. Looking at volume, it's actually very hard to tell because we haven't had a lot of buy volume after the split. As I said, most of the buying was done before, but we've had consistent selling every day, just not really impressive volume on the sell side. So Tesla could trade sideways here. We could even see a little bounce here. It is not guaranteed that Tesla will drop more from here. I was confident that after the split, we'd see a major drop on Tesla and we saw that 12%. But further from here, it's going to be very hard to determine whether Tesla will continue dropping. The momentum looks like it is to the downside, but we need to see accompanying volume. So in terms of selling a cash secure put, I would likely wait a bit more here on Tesla. But for those of you that are comfortable with Tesla's current price, you can sell the 200 cash secure put in December for almost $900. Now, what does this mean? This means that if Tesla is not $200 or below by December, then you get to keep 900 bucks, right? This is all yours to keep and you can sell another put if you'd like. If Tesla is 200 or below, then you would actually be obligated to buy 100 shares of Tesla, but not for $200. Remember, you sold the 200 cash you could put for nine bucks or $900. So your uh, cost basis on Tesla would actually be $191, which I'm sure a lot of you watching this would love to get that cost basis on Tesla. So if you're comfortable with where Tesla is at today in terms of its price, you can sell that 200 cash you could put for almost 900 bucks. However, as I said, for me, I would much rather wait to see if Tesla does break that market structure before selling a put and maybe would opt for dollar cost averaging here since we are down 33% from highs as opposed to selling a cash secure put. Anyway, traders, that is it for this video. You guys wanted to see the trades that I discussed in my video about how to trade Tesla post split. You wanted an update on the plays and a little bit more detail about how I executed those trades for your own knowledge. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, leave it a big fat thumbs up. Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you played on Tesla and what you are planning on doing, what cost you are planning on buying Tesla at now that it has split. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I post finance and trading content every single day. And you can get more of this same great content that I post on YouTube just on a more regular basis because it's a lot easier to create content for those platforms. If you want access to all of the trades, the courses, the Zoom calls, the chats, the analysis, et cetera, sign up. Link is in the description below. Make an appointment with one of our ambassadors. Signups currently are closed for August, but we will be opening spots, uh, spots, spots for September and would be happy to have you. 
Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.